witchlings. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, your little cookie out of witch. Oh! And it is sub-zero outside, so we are on my comfy chair today. And today we are going to be talking about building an ancestor altar. Um, I am going to be referencing this book, Honoring Your Ancestors by Mallory Bedways. Um, a guide to ancestral veneration. If you haven't read it and you are interested in ancestor work, I really, really recommend this book. She is a spiritualist, folk Catholic, and witch of Italian descent. She has a blog on Italian folk magic, so she knows a lot about Italian folk traditions and referenced some of it in this book. Not only does this book talk about different spirits and ancestors from talking about blood ancestors, lineage ancestors, saints, affinity, spirit guides, ghost related spirits, land spirits, house spirits, and non-human ancestors like plants. She gives rituals to reconnect with ancestors and talks about building your ancestor altar. I do not have a very <laughs> crazy ancestor altar. I used to have one that had a bunch of candles on it. It had candles, candles to different saints. Um, I had a St. Michael candle, a St. Mary candle. I had multiple saint cards placed on there. I think I have a picture somewhere. I'm not actually going to show the altar itself, but I did go all out. And depending on your tradition or your culture, saint or ancestor altars may look certain ways, um, depending on what is important in your culture and what is tradition. For me, my family's ancestors altar, ancestor altars have always just been a place with photos of family members. In the book, in the book Italian Folk Magic, Mary Grace Farin also talks a little bit about this, but I have always gotten used to, there was always a windowsill or a space in my home that had pictures of my great grandma, my grandma, my nana, my papa, everyone, um, pictures of my parents, all kind of in one space. They weren't dispersed throughout the house. And so they were usually placed in an area of the house that a lot of people would um, be in. So for example, my current ancestral altar is in my kitchen, which is a space that both my partner and I share and we spend a lot of time in. I do all my cooking in there and since I've been doing more cooking and devoting this to my ancestors, this is kind of, that's where I felt it was best. Um, I do tend to keep my ancestor altar separate from my working altar or any deity shrines I have just because I don't want the saints to interact with the deities. <laughs> just me. So for a long time I had a saint uh, altar and a place to uh, honor them on my ancestor altar and also my ancestors liked being close to the saints because folk Catholicism, that whole shebang. Um, I do have now some things that were on my ancestor altar on my working altar. The first example is my tarot deck that I used to commune with my ancestors, the Tro Il Troco Soprafino. I also have a saint stone that I was gifted by one of my followers at one of my book signings and a little ceramic cross. I do commune with my ancestors before a working. I tend to put on ancestor oil, etc. The working altar also holds things that are associated with my ancestors, such as the rosary my mother gave me, my hand rosary, um, and other kind of more Catholic tools. So even though there is a blend of both uh, my full Catholic elements in my practice and the kind of more straightforward witchy elements in my practice on my working altar. I do keep the candle to my ancestors and the shrine where I give them offerings and honor them separate. In this book, Building Your Ancestor Altar, Mallory Vedaways talks about uh, the diversity in altars, talks about fire and its association with prayer, um, glass and case seven day candles. I do a glass and case seven day candle as my ancestor altar. It's white. It has my ancestors' names and maiden names on the back, which I will not show. Water represents the medium through which spiritual energy passes. Talking about cloth, lots of different kind of aspects to it. Pictures of your ancestors, holy images, and memento mori. 
skulls, hourglasses, working an altar as well, talking about cleansing, setting lights, blessing oils, charms, and other tools, offerings, and a ritual to consecrate the new altar. I have some of those things on my altar. I have a cloth bag, which is a protection spell that I keep with my holy image of the Saint Mary, her statue, and next to my white ancestor candle. I also have, I don't have any images of my um, ancestors yet, but I do have something that belonged to my grandma. It's a little bunny that I keep on my altar. Like I said, I'm not showing the altar directly, but I am showing what's on it. I also typically give offerings by way of like a little ceramic cup to, and I'm getting better about giving offerings every week, every other day, etc. Offerings to your ancestors can be a lot of different things. I know certain ancestors of mine that are very particular and like certain things. Sometimes you can just offer a tiny bit of food that you have cooked, tiny bit of a drink that you have made. Water is great. Really all you need, water, white candle. It doesn't need to be elaborate and it doesn't need to be super extravagant. Place things on your ancestor altar that remind you of your ancestors, of your family, and of your ties with them. Um, for example, if you, like me, have things passed down to you from your mother, from your great-grandmother, you can place those things on the altar to kind of charge and cleanse and wait there while you're, when you're not using them or when you're not wearing them. For me, most of the things that were passed down are on my person all, all the time, except for the bunny. But the cornicello I wear was my grandmother's and I'd never take it off. Um, and I have a Mary miraculous medal, miraculous medal with the image of Mary that if you don't know, that Alina is super important in my family. Um, and I wear this so much, but when I'm not wearing it, I place it around the Mary statue to recharge. The purpose of an ancestor altar is to give your ancestors a space within your life, to venerate them and honor them in different ways. This could be lighting incense, this could be talking to them, this could be doing devotional activities to them. Although I'm not sure 100% the origin of having a altar in kind of a communal space, that's just how it's always been for me and my family. Even if my mom didn't know she was making the ancestor altar, you can't tell me that all the pictures of my family in one window so is not an ancestor altar. It 100% is. It, depending on kind of your culture and tradition, because a lot, so many cultures and traditions and practices center ancestral veneration. It's not something that is just about from, from witchcraft or from folk magic. It is something that so many cultures do, whether it, it they are, they have, that that family is like contributing to folk magic or folk practitioners they may be doing it without that think um specifically japanese korean ancestor veneration from what i have learned is very important in both of those cultures um within hoodoo ancestral veneration is incredibly important within italian folk magic it is incredibly important even within catholicism like a whole religion you go and you light a candle for someone, and sometimes that person is your ancestors, and you are venerating the saints, you are honoring the saints, which in, as Mallory Radaway says, is in part your ancestors. But within so many different pockets and places and cultures and traditions, people venerate their ancestors whether it is kind of through something that they were taught to do in their culture and where they live, or whether they came upon it through reconnecting with folk magic or reconnecting with their culture. It is so important and it is not just something that is associated with one place, one tradition, or one culture. To add on, what I've been told and what I've always been told is you are your ancestors you are carrying them with you in so many, like literally in your DNA, you are carrying it. And in the same way you are carrying generational trauma, you are carrying all of these things inside your body and healing it and addressing it and devoting something to your body and to yourself. So for example, making food and nourishing your body is also nourishing your ancestors. It is also nourishing and healing the generations to come because one day you will be an ancestor. Ain't that crazy? That crazy. 
And while not everyone may work within the full Catholic aspect, ancestor veneration goes beyond that, beyond Catholicism, beyond Italian folk magic, beyond witchcraft. It isn't even and should not be considered witchcraft because it's not. It's a bar and it's not. Depending, like I said, depending on your culture, tradition, and practice, you may be working with a very specific type of ancestor altar set up a certain way. It may be a shrine. Um, it may be something that everyone in the family uses. It may be something that only you use. It really depends. And learning from your family, if you are within a culture that ancestral veneration is very present, you can talk to the people around you, talk to your family and say, what do I do? What is What did this look like? Do you remember your great grandma having this? Do you remember how you did this when you were young? And even if you were disconnected from it. But creating an ancestor altar, to me, and having it in a place that is communally used, like the kitchen, it reminds me of their presence every morning. Even if the candle's not always lit, even if sometimes I forget the offering, they are there in the kitchen with me when I'm cooking. They are there when I'm doing spell work. They are there when I ask them for assistance, when I do a little prayer to them, when I spend time with them. And I don't know if I've talked about devotional activities to ancestors at all, but honoring your ancestors is a great way to get into this and really look at it and really connect with them. But yeah, at the end of the day, focus on what makes you feel comfortable. You may not have a saint statue on your ancestor altar. You may only be able to do a white glass candle and a cup of water, and that's fine. That's enough. Um, you may, on the other hand, have something very extravagant. You may have something with a lot of um, pictures with things from your ancestors, from your grandparents and great-grandparents that was passed down to you. That's also fine. It really is about your personal practice, what you are comfortable with, and where and what your kind of tradition and practice and culture do. And from there, you can slowly build your ancestor altar, you can begin doing devotional work for them, you can begin um, giving them offerings of food, water, my ancestors love coffee, give them a lot of coffee, and you can include them in your workings eventually. But yeah, this is my cute little, my short little video on ancestor, creating an ancestor altar. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to share how you make your ancestor altar or some of the things that are on your altar, drop it down below. If you want, you can subscribe, like, turn the notification on, but absolutely no pressure. Remember to drink water and have an amazing rest of your day. Siate Benedetti.